Hi and welcome to How Do You Like Your Coffee? I'm your host Chris and today we are going to talk about the Mandela Effect. More specifically, Sinbad's Shazam. There are thousands of people who are convinced that Sinbad starred in a movie as a genie titled Shazam. This is uh, an example of what most people refer to as the Mandela Effect. Others are referring it to as a false memory. Um, it was at one time so convincing um, the way people recalled this and how they um, reacted uh, to trying to find this movie that it nearly convinced me that this movie actually exists and um, still in question in mind uh, in the back of my mind it says well if somebody can come up with this movie um, if somebody finds it in their collection, if somebody finds it somewhere deep in the trenches of the internet, I, I really, really uh, would like to be one of the first to know. Um, until then, we do have to believe that uh, this is a an false memory that's been implanted in many people's minds. Now, this is not to say that it was made up or purposely done. Um, it's saying that it's something that can happen. And there's a few things that in my research and with the psychology classes at school uh, that I've come up with a theory of my own. Um, and I'm, you know, I wanted to hear your thoughts in, in the comments below of what you think about this as I go along. A few of those uh, things that could cause our recollection of the movie that even Sinbad himself said he did not play in. Um, why do we think this exists? So a few thoughts. Uh, uh, conflation, um, that is taking two ideas and combining them into one. Uh, sometimes that uh, this is done on purpose. Um, we do, uh, we like to call that uh, collab but in more senses when it comes to this, it's called conflation. Conflation, a uh, good example of conflation is, uh, say you're studying for school. School causes conflation a lot. Um, you're studying for school, uh, an exam in school, you have more than one subject to study for, you've done so much cramming. All of a sudden you go to take your test, somebody asks you, um, okay, you are got a science question. They wanna know what year the vaccine for diphtheria was created and you happen to be studying for the um, uh, in social studies the war of 1812 or maybe the civil war so you give a date of one of these things and you get the question wrong you get the answer wrong to that question because you conflated two ideas into one you mixed uh, like the war of 1812 into your science answers. So that's conflation. And then there's the illusory, illusory of truth effect. Now, uh, some of this I got from Wikipedia, so it'll be easier to put in the description below instead of just getting the book and making you guys look for the book and read it. So, um, illusory of truth effect is, quote, also known as the illusion of truth effect, validity uh, effect, truth effect, or the reiteration effect. It is the tendency to believe false information to be correct after repeated exposure. When truth is assessed, people rely on whether the information is in line with other understanding or if it feels familiar. The first condition is logical. As people compare new information with what they already know to be true. Repetition, repetition makes statements easier to process relative to new unrepeated statements, um, leading people to believe that the repeated conclusion is more truthful, end quote. Um, this can lead to a what we refer to as a false 
memory, which is, quote, again from Wikipedia, a false memory is a phenomenon where a person recalls something that did not happen or recalls it differently from the way it actually happened. Now, one underlying cause of this could be suggestibility, another um, uh, thing associated with false memory and um, recalling things that may not be true, um, that you are convinced are true. So, so let's try it again. So, suggestibility, it is the quality of being inclined to accept and act on the suggestion of others. One may feel one may fill in the gaps in certain memories with false information given by another when recalling a scenario or moment. Suggestibility uses cues to distort recollection when the subject has been persistently told something about a past event. His or her memory of the event conforms to the repeated message, end quote. Now, um... Putting this all together, okay, we now we know, okay, this is a false memory. How did this come about? Um, when looking at uh, what we'll call it truth effect and uh, suggestibility, let's put them together because they do uh, coexist the truth effect and the suggestibility. And um, uh, the, some of the information I got off the internet says a lot of politicians use this during elections. Um, it gets the person to um, believe what they are saying. Um, a lot of um, places are calling it mass hypnotic suggestions. Um, now, this is a reason we believe uh, fake news. We see a picture and it's captioned uh, in a certain way. Because the picture is there, we tend to believe that caption. Um, this is all conforms into uh, the in likeness of it, of uh, a false memory. Okay, so what might have happened is maybe one person comes about, ask a question. Maybe they asked uh, Google. Maybe they asked a group on social media. I recall a uh, I recall Sinbad. Starring as a genie in a movie called Shazam. Does anyone else remember this? Now, even the question alone brings up questions in your own mind. And then you begin to wonder. I wonder. And you start to think. And um, that starts a, a chain reaction effect. People are it, Now the suggestion is in the mind that this is actually a possibility. It's a possibility. All of a sudden, we are remembering a movie. But how are we remembering a movie? Sinbad is a genie in a movie called Shazam. Well, uh, here's where conflation comes in. Uh, back in 1994, there was a TV movie based on the series of books, Aliens for Breakfast. And Sinbad just happened to play as the alien who did have some powers. Um, it wasn't a very good movie. Um, it didn't make, you know, it didn't make for something that was very famous or anything. But I picture being made back in 1994, somewhere along the line, there were people who did enjoy the movie and decided they were going to record it on their VHS tapes. Ah, there we go. Then, in 1996, Shaquille O'Neal starred in Kazam. Now, um, most people are saying, yeah, but I would remember that movie. I would remember Shaquille O'Neal in that movie. Shaquille O'Neal's famous. But, think of it this way. When somebody says Shaquille O'Neal to you, and you are going to associate him with anything at all, the first thing that's going to come to mind is basketball. He's a superstar. He was one of the greatest, still is probably, um, you know, he is retired, but this is our association with Shaquille O'Neal. We're not going to associate him with acting so much, especially the younger, uh, the younger generation who may have been very young at the time 
this movie was supposedly uh in his you know came out and uh they remember seeing it it's very easy first of all uh five or six year old and uh, let me tell you a lot of people in comments that i have uh when i was doing my um researching a lot of people have recalled seeing it when they were five or six years old um when we're five or six years old, we do have a lot of memories, but they are vague. Our memories at that age are very vague. But how do we explain adults who said their children watch these movies? Still, conflation. Uh, you have a collection of movies, VHS tapes. You have Kazam and you have recorded Aliens for Breakfast. Your child just happens to like both movies. You're watching both movies back to back, over and over. Believe me, there's a lot of kids in my family. They have done this. They have watched movies back to back to back to back. Um, they'll watch one, then the next, then the next. And I, yes, I have confused two movies at the same time many a time so I know that it's possible that you can create a false memory out of conflation and uh, like I said the suggestibility is there when there is enough people uh, convince themselves and their uh, comments are so convincing I know my memories I know what I recalled I know what I saw you don't want to doubt anyone, number one. You don't want to doubt anyone. You don't want to say, no, that, that's not true. You're, you're lying. You know, you don't want to place that doubt on anyone. And nobody's going to be lying about it either. They are truly convinced that they've seen this movie. Now, there are pictures of uh, Sinbad dressed as a genie. Yes, there is. And many people might have, and I've seen this as well, said they saw the picture of him as a genie in this movie. Um, they do exist. Those pictures of Sinbad as the, genie, as the genie do exist. However, this goes to a comedy short that College Humor Originals has, had released in 2017 entitled, We Found Sinbad's Shazam Genie Movie. However, when you see these images... Um, what people are probably doing, and I've done it myself, uh, you want to prove a point, you see the image, you click off of it. I saw the image. I downloaded the image. Here's the image. This is the picture that I saw. They didn't quite read the story behind it. They didn't read the captions. They didn't go to the site where the picture was. Um, so they are now thoroughly convinced, and pictures are great at convincing somebody of a story um i was watching a uh uh a video that uh dober nope had released back in april matthias was explaining the same uh phenomena to uh tanner uh there was a picture thing i think that we're going over something things that make make you um uncomfortable or something like that i'm going to find the video and put it in the description um when you scroll through it you will see that he explains himself that there is a phenomena that uh a picture and then somebody could caption it and just you know they're not really thinking about other stories that the picture could have gone to originally they're thinking about the caption under that picture and that picture making that caption true um, so in all, in conclusion, um, I am going to, uh, theorize that, yes, um, I nearly had implanted a false memory, uh, by reading about this, uh, this one example of the Mandela effect, uh, that we refer to it as, um, until somebody comes up with some proof, a proof of the existence of this movie. Now, guys, the internet is filled with information, I, endless information. It's vast. And you would think one little search would bring up this movie and whether it existed. Another thing I think about is there are people who collect 
uh, VHS tapes. I know there was a local person who had just gave away over a thousand VHS tapes that they had collected over the years. You got to think that this, if this movie exists, then that VHS tape exists as well, because you can find Aliens for Breakfast on YouTube. That's where I found it. Um, I didn't watch the whole thing, but I did see bits and pieces that I scrolled through this movie, and I said, okay, I can see where the explanations of this movie might come about. Now, I also wonder if most of these suggestions came about after the 2017 uh, short that was released by College Humor Originals. Um, many people before that had to have uh, been convinced that it did exist because of the way they titled the movie. However, I think even more uh, became ex convinced after the release of the picture for this movie. Now, I would like to um, leave it here. And I, I really want to hear your thoughts on this. Do you uh, recall this is your memory? Do you recall this as a movie? Are you convinced that this movie exists? If so, um, please let me know uh, what was it like? Uh, what other actors were in this movie? Um, uh, anything, any information you have on the movie? Um, if you have your thoughts and theories on this, I'd like to hear those as well, and that way we can carry on the conversation. I'm going to also leave a link to my Twitter and my Facebook page, a uh, very new Facebook page. There's barely anybody on that or anything, um, but I will be starting to use that again. Um, and uh, like I said, i uh, like to hear your thoughts. If you like this, please consider subscribing and clicking that bell so you will know the next time I upload, which I'm planning on uploading every day at noon so you guys can watch at lunch time. And until then, keep the coffee hot and those pinkies up. I will be seeing you.